Right, so speaking, since I'm speaking about myself, right, this one, people, this one, this one, um, people have asked me, some people have watched my clip. Now I'm going to speak about my, my a bit about a few words on my development. Some people have come across my clip in the past. I've there's a clip around somewhere online of when I'd come back and they saw this what the hell and they've been absolutely shocked. Um Inaya saying Musti someone said I'm a hippie Muslim because of you. <laughs> a happy Muslim because <laughs> of me right so so what they'd done is they'd come across uh, this and it kind of shocked them that they thought well you know how can it be that let me just un momento un momento let me just bring this over here people right so you can see they saw this picture of me right that you're gonna see across the screen now <laughs> and it kind of shocked the hell out of them that what the hell they saw that and they thought well how did he go from that that thing over there to this thing over here <laughs> So it really kind of surprised them and they said, well, you know, a lot of people and this talk that I'm doing over over here uh, that you can see this talk is uh, it's a bit of a kind of morbid talk as it is. So I'm speaking about things like uh, I think it was about death and um, about kind of benefiting and seeking knowledge and things like that. So it's had a few people kind of flabbergasted over it like what the hell happened and people have thrown up their theories what happened how did you change why did you lose this iman this faith of yours uh why did you uh i know and, and you felt you lost out in life <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to psychoanalyze me and they want a kind of they want to fit me in some kind of standard that they've got in their minds so a lot of so several people and you've got the haters but you've got several people who've legitimately asked me that look what is going on what happened so okay uh let me just shed a bit of light on that you see when you see that picture of me this um the, where i've i'm speaking at this conference and i've got the hat on and i had come back from my travels abroad i believe it was that year that that was more or less very soon after i'd kind of come back from traveling abroad so there's two things to focus on here one is my look my appearance and two is the the personality so my attitude um how i kind of behave okay so the outlook the apparent sorry the actual look in terms of my hat and wearing a hat and having uh, a beard let's say around the sides and things like this this was not something that i suddenly changed it was not like one day i woke up and i just kind of just took a blade and shaved my beard and uh i took off the hat and changed my clothes and <laughs> it wasn't like that at all that what you're looking at this kind of picture it is if i can right if i show you this right just to bring this back right this what you're looking at right here this is something this is in 2005 yeah it is 15 years ago from today it's something you know almost a lifetime ago now the change people are saying well mufti how did you change what what happened was it an event was it an incident was it this a midlife crisis was it something uh, a um a lack of fulfillment 
a lack of desires, a lack of... I don't know, what was it? It was nothing like this. It was simply life. Life is what it was. Do you, do you understand? It's not... Look, you, you have to understand these things, that life is what happened. These things did not happen overnight. I, it took years in the development, my furthering my knowledge, uh, consolidating my learning, battling, grappling with concepts, discussing dialogues, debates, months, years of dealing with ideas, dealing, broadening my horizons. Uh, I've read so much more since I came back. I Obviously, I used to read there as well when I studied. I studied for something like seven years abroad. I was out of this country for more or less like seven or eight years I was out of this country with very few visits back. Maybe I only visited it. I only visited twice whilst I was away. And, and other than that, I just stayed abroad. I was in Damascus for, you know, a couple, a couple of years and I was in Pakistan. I was in Damascus, I think, a year and a half and then in Pakistan the rest of the time in different places, Islamabad and Karachi. And... Now, you are restricted and you, a person grows with their environment. Now, you will grow to certain heights depending on where you are. As you come as you your horizons change so will your conceptual horizons when i was back here i pursued further academic learning i pursued a degree in psychology i once again came across a broad range of people uh, i pursued a degree in uh, a teaching degree i taught philosophy at a level i had to study philosophy western philosophy in western uh, institutes at university I had to I, I did a master's I you know spoke with my professor my uh, kind of had discussions back forth thought about things I pondered over a lot of this psychology that I was learning and I met different people and there was a gradual conceptual uh, metamorphosis over those years I mean it wasn't something it wasn't like one day I woke up and this happened this took years. I, I mean, probably, I would say arguably, probably about f initially four years, four, maybe something like that, four years, uh, four, at least between three to four years to some change that you saw. Um, it wasn't necessarily like this, but it was more than probably about 60 percent that probably took about three, four years when I was back. All those that kind of thinking, a lot of um, a lot of thought went into these kind of things about what does this actually mean confidence as well about confidence about ideas this was incredibly important because you know when you're in the madrasa the issue was this that you see i i was always by the way when it comes to personality when it comes to personality, you no, know, it wasn't bad influence. Actually, you know, a lot of the Muslim friends I had here, they were actually very traditional. Like they had, you know, long beards. Many of them have still got very long beards till now. You know, a lot of my close friends still have much longer beards than me. They still casually dress in jubbas, shalwar kameez, do things like that. They're still very... See, this is the thing about my circle of friends. They're not actually... Um, you know, somebody, I'm not like a, you know, like some kind of beer sub for them. You understand? Like they live their own lives. They do their own thing, their own kind of spiritual growth. They're not dependent on me in any way. So, yeah, at that time, I, I kind of like, I thought about, um, concept this thing i wanted to say about confidence in ideas you see it hinges on your outlook now you see people who've watched this video clip of me speaking about death and seeking knowledge i'm very serious in that so they assume they assume that that's how i used to be you see now this is is they, that they are mistaken I was nothing, that was not my persona. <laughs> I used to, 
as much my persona was very similar to how it is now I used to crack jokes all the time I used to have a crazy sense of humor I, I used to have like a different opinions all the time I was a ver like I was a maverick in my opinions I was very these things were still me but you are watching a clip where I wasn't quite one the topic was quite morbid uh, I'm very serious about seeking knowledge too. I was still finding myself in how to develop, how to give speeches. Because at that stage, I was very young and I was told that if you give a speech, you can't be cracking too many jokes in a speech. This is what I was told. Yeah. Now, like I gave speeches in Pakistan, I gave speeches in my institute, I gave speeches in Arabic, I gave speeches that were televised on Pakistan TV at certain points. I remember the, the Home Secretary of Pakistan visited our madrasa, I gave the speech in English. Now I, I gave the, the graduation speech in our year when we graduated in Dawrat al-Hadith and there were at least 3,000 people present. I was one of the people that gave the speech. So you see, I was kind of molded and told off that don't crack jokes when you're speaking. So, okay, so I, I kind of inhibited that side during speech, uh, during speech delivery, because this is how I was told in the madrasa, no, you're not allowed to do this when you, when you give a speech. You have to play, play a particular part. You have to put on a mask when you give a speech. You have to be serious. So I did. So when I gave that speech, I was still in that mode. What happened in the years that followed, and another thing about madrasa is, you know when you have your fiqhi opinions, I used to have a lot of maverick opinions. Uh, the, 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 a lot of the people around you were absolute kind of like, they were people who they were absolute joy kills when it came to independent thought. They hated people having their critical thought. The teachers, the students, they used to, I mean, people will tell you that even now that knew me from the madrasa days, that he used to even then always have these kind of strange opinions. It's not something I developed when I came back. And even then I was very, kind of out of the mold by their standards, not by the UK standards, but by Pakistan madrasa standards. But the problem was there was so much of a knockback. Every time you disagreed, people hated on you. Everybody hated on you. Now, you see, you live there. You don't have somewhere to go back to. You live in that institute. Your teachers are there. Your you know, your, the fellow uh, classmates are there, your friends are there. This is life. This is the world. Now, whether you like it or not, and you're still young, you see, you haven't actually found yourself entirely in adulthood yet. You know, you're still searching your path. Now, facing constant criticism is harsh. It's difficult. You know, you people always telling you what the hell's wrong with you. You know, you're not allowed to think like that. This is haram, this is, you know, what you're doing is a tal, mudil, kumrahi, you're going, becoming misled, misguided, and constantly getting this knockback. So you have to kind of, you, you're not 100% confident in always promoting these views that you have, or these kind of thought, uh, because you're still, you haven't fully matured in them. Now, when I came back here and I then had a different circle, I had my circle of friends who I used to discuss, religious friends, non-Muslims, universities, taught in colleges, I taught in schools, I taught, I gave private classes, I started to mix with different ulama, I started to read things, I started to discuss with professors. I started to develop like there, there was a maturity in the in the confidence in promoting these views in in being true to yourself now and that journey of being true to yourself you know to thine own self be true this probably took me something like from that point it may have began 
uh, probably the year after, maybe like in 2006, 2007 it began properly and it would have lasted for at least a decade, I feel, that at least till about 2017 maybe. It was a very long process, you know, these things. It wasn't something overnight and gaining a lot of, you know, trust and, and you know, do you need validation from other scholars? Don't you need validation? Do you need this? Don't you need this? Yeah, so it wasn't something about, oh, you never got to, oh, you came back and your parents, you know, as a kid, your parents never let you, your parents forced you to go to madrasa. My parents never forced me to go to madrasa. My parents flipped when I told them I wanted to go to madrasa. They they were really anti anti this whole me going to study. They they weren't they they weren't from this kind of scene and they didn't like that as a. Uh, so I actually had to fight. I, I had to put up a huge resistance to study. It wasn't something easy, and I was never. My family were never religious anyway, and I never went to madrasa as a kid. I went to normal. I went to a secondary school. I went to a college. We just chilled out, did our normal stuff. So it isn't. So with this video, in terms of personality, yes, it's developed to some extent, like everybody, but it hasn't actually changed. It's just in that video you can't tell because I was taught that this is how you give speeches you don't crack jokes the other thing is in terms of how i looked yes that has changed but it didn't change overnight it changed with my views over many years spanning over a decade but i i wanted to kind of put this out there because a lot of people have asked me and i thought fair enough this is um uh you know it's something very you know it, it does it's I'm sure it's interesting to some people that and especially in letting them know that look it's okay <laughs> honestly what kind of a life would I be living if I was exactly the same as I was in if my thought processes were like in 2005 if you think today if your knowledge and your awareness and your critical skills and your the information you have and you are exactly how you were I don't mean you've aged, but not mentally since and not conceptually since 2005 or since 10 years ago or even five years ago, then what is the point of your existence? <laughs> Are you just trying to contribute carbon dioxide to the plants? I mean, what is the point of you? <laughs> yeah, so cool. I hope that's... Uh, um, you know, it helps because I would say, look, do not succumb to peer pressure. 